or almost afternoon. Uh, it's Kelly English from the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board uh, for Arthritis Research Canada. And we're here at the CRA conference. And today I am talking to Jenny Leakes. Now, Jenny is um, from Arthritis Research Canada and has done some incredible studies with us. Uh, she was a podium speaker yesterday, spoke very well. But today, Jenny, what I'd like you to do is just say, how did you get to this point where you were doing research here? Oh, oh, well, I'm originally from the UK, and I moved here about six years and started as a research assistant um, at Arthritis Research Canada. I was working with a medical sociologist, Dr. Anne Townsend. We miss her so oh, much. No. She moved <laughs> just to a shout UK. out to you, Anne. <laughs> you can come back oh, anytime. Yeah. Um, and now I'm working with um, Dr. Linda Lee, who is a, a Canada Research Chair in Knowledge Translation. She's amazing too, isn't Absolutely. she? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you are. Really am. Um, and I also work with Dr. Um, Antonio Lina, who's a rheumatologist and senior scientist at Arthritis Research Canada. And so, yeah, that was really my introduction into the world of health research, arthritis research. And then fast forward three years and then I started a PhD program at the University of British Columbia where Linda Lee is my supervisor. Good supervisor. Oh, Between good. her and Dr. Vino, yeah. you have just the best, don't you? Yeah, we fantastic. work in a great environment, <laughs> the two of us. Yeah. Um, Jenny was actually my introduction you yes, to APAB um, because I was on your social media. Um, and a little bit of ethics in there, and eventually joined APAP with the, the board. Yes. Um, but you've been doing a really special project, dear to my heart. Can you explain it to us? Yes, well, it's a project, it's called About Us, and it's a project that's been um, designed and conducted with researchers and patient partners from the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board. And its aim is to learn more about patients' experiences of being engaged in the research process. So not just um, engaged in terms of participating as a research participant in a study, but engaged in the sense that they become a member of the research team. And so that can really um, apply to whether or not they're sort of in the meetings at the table with the researcher speaking about what the research question should be. So decisions around what the study is focusing on. Decisions around how that research will then be done. Decisions around how those research findings will be um, disseminated or shared with the public. So really throughout the entire process of research, um, patients are getting involved. And of course, you know yourself, um, the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board has been doing those kinds of things with researchers in collaboration and partnership with researchers for over a decade. We have a very rich um, group too, both past members and new members of, of every education level, um, age level, disease specific level. Um, it, it's very rich. Did you find that when you were doing the um, Interviews? Absolutely, yes, because we, we had um, the age range of the participants who took part in the interviews for this study range from 26 to 68. Um, so a real broad range there. And I think, you know, founded in 2001, members of APAB have been involved in over 45 different research studies. I've so, learned so much from my fellow members. <laughs> but also, um, for me, it's been, because I was also part of this, it, APAP has created this environment with ARC mm -hmm. where you feel comfortable with the researchers, you feel comfortable with the, um, with the staff. It, it's just a very accepting. Yes. And it's nice to, that you've gotten getting the word out on this. Well, yeah, well, that was something that was coming through in the interviews um, with, that we conducted with the members of APAB, is that building so 
social relations with researchers were really valuable. Just being able to pass in the corridor and say hello, um, and you know, being met with a very friendly and welcoming um, kind of demeanor was really helpful um, for the, for the, especially for the newer members, you know, who hadn't necessarily been um, engaging in research for very long. The people that we were speaking to um, had been that had been engaging from anywhere from one month to over 10 years, so that's a real spectrum of experience. Very big spectrum. Yeah, and so, and so that, like I say, those participants that we were speaking to who are engaged, you know, being engaged to sort of newer members, um, they really valued that. And in, I, I know that you, um, we were hearing in the interviews that there were specific activities like the lunch and learn where members had a chance to sort of go out for lunch with a researcher. I think ask that's a pretty like unique them. thing. Oh, absolutely. I really do yeah. think that's very unique. I think so. And that really gives that chance then to get to know each other on a one-to-one -one basis. I mean, we're hearing through the interviews that you know, participants were saying, well, they knew about my family, I knew about theirs. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting that real kind of um, closeness going and, and really valuing the kind of that budding friendship Possible. Exactly. I, I know that when Mary Devera, Dr. Mary Devera, for example, had her baby, I think it was celebrated, you know, and the first time she came in, it was like meeting a new family member. It was yes. wonderful. So, yes. yeah, yeah. Now, um, obviously, there, there were a lot of positives, I know, um, but were there negatives, too, that could be improved on? Because that was also part of it. Um, we were celebrating all the things that we do so that maybe other people will form groups like this. Um, but there were things, yes. obviously, that we had to do to be more welcoming or something. Yes, yeah. well, in these interviews, um, we were hearing about some of the downsides that people were experiencing, um, engaging in this in the research process, and that they really related to needing to yeah. juggle priorities. Yeah. I think that's really a problem, and we do a couple of unique things. Did that come out? Yes, well, people were talking to us about how engaging in research, it meant an extra sort of volunteer workload that they had to take on. And so they were finding new strategies to try and juggle the added workload with their existing priorities. Things like getting better at saying no. <laughs> And we encourage that. We yeah. encourage saying no. We're probably the only volunteer group yeah. that does encourage no. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, again, that, that environment uh, within which people were engaging really helped because there was, they were getting um, that, that kind of reassurance from um, patients who had been experienced, um, who were sort of more experienced in the engaging process, who were being more kind of um, reassuring that that was totally fine. Um, and having a very flexible approach, you know, um, having people pick up um, tasks that have been asked for you when needed. If, for example, you know, um, if, you know, if, if for example, you know, you were going through a period where your arthritis symptoms were sort of um, more aggravated, um, so it's really having that support within the environment that helped people continue to engage despite the downside. We have done a few unique things. You can stay at home and do it all um, with video, which is huge for me. There are many times that I just can't get out in the evening. Um, the other thing too, and I read it in your literature, some of the comments out, um, one was the fact that we have the dinner meetings. And people said that if they had to have gone home, fed the family and go back out, they probably wouldn't have volunteered. That was really important, especially with people who were working. And then at the end of the day, having to sort of you know go to another meeting at the end and just having dinner. Made As a matter of fact, sometimes <laughs> sometimes it sounds really mean, but sometimes I think I should get dinner for tonight, and I think, and I'll I'll do it by teleconferencing because I'm really tired. And then I think, no, I could just go there. Somebody has my dinner, and yeah. and they're not always fancy dinners. So they're not expensive. Don't could be wrong, but um, how about the social? Did anyone say anything about the social benefits? Absolutely, yes. People had formed lifelong friendships, they were telling me um, in, these, in the interviews that we were doing. 
with other members of the group. People were telling me that this group's really built on camaraderie and that kind of support, and that sometimes it would it was the it was the thing that really prompted them to go to the meetings and really got them out of the house. Um, so yeah, the social relations play a big part. I know there's <laughs> something about somebody coming and giving you a hug at the beginning of the meeting, especially if you're kind of having a tough time and understanding your disease and wanting to learn more about the disease. Um, that's why I'm here at CRA, as a matter of fact, is because APAB sends us to conferences so that we can learn and then bring it back, um, which also helps in the whole research. We see people from Arthritis Research Canada, um, Calgary, right. for example. Right. Now, APAB, um, we are part of Arthritis Research Canada, obviously, um, in the sense that we are the advisory board for the patients. Uh, on arthritisresearch.ca would be the site to see information about us, yes. to ask any of us, especially yourself, you know, how we did this, and to, your research will be there in lay summary, I assume. Absolutely, yes, it's all yeah. there. So lay summary <laughs> means that it will be in a, in language that all of us understand, um, because we do hope that all across Canada, and to the, the whole world should be doing this because it's so valuable for both patients and researchers. We hope that this becomes a platform that people can see some of the mistakes we made, some of the good things we've done, um, to help them to create a board like ours. Yes. But right now it's about us. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have any questions from anyone? Uh, this is a question for Jenny. Oh. Uh, what part of research do you like best? The brainstorming phase, the development phase, or like it's the results that excites you? It's the um, speaking with the participants that I enjoy the most. Because that's really the piece at which you know we can do all the work that we can possibly do, putting together our research questions and thinking about our interview questions. And then once you're actually in there, um, speaking with the participants, you learn what it's like um, to be experiencing um, that engagement in the real world. And so that's where really the, the rich learning really is um, during that we call it the data gathering phase, but you know, during that phase where you're interviewing face to face with someone and learning about what it is that is taking your interest. <laughs> Can you think of something that uh, the most interesting thing that you have learned in this phase that you perhaps never know before in your education? Yes, well I think coming to um, Arthritis Research Canada um, as a new research assistant, I really didn't have a good understanding of how arthritis was really affecting people's lives. And then having the opportunity to interview hundreds of patients, and you know, in many cases going to their homes, and seeing how it was impacting their daily lives was a real eye-opener for me. Because of course I came to Arthritis Research Canada um, kind of under the impression that arthritis was sort of general aches and pains, and I sort of had a very kind of lay person's understanding of the disease. Um, and so that was a real education, interviewing the patients, like I say. That was where the real rich learning opportunity really was. And I think from a patient point of view, that part has really empowered us because mm -hmm. someone listened and you know, helped. So I think your, your study, definitely, just to conclude, was very, very positive from people. Um, and there were a few things that needed working on uh, yes, to make the newcomers feel. But I think it was very positive. And Jenny, it was so nice to see you speaking on the podium yesterday. I was oh. so proud because I thought, it, you know, oh, uh, you. the work you have done has represented us very well. Oh, and we're so pleased about it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. So